Baker from either Maharishi or Buckminster Fuller, how they view what creative intelligence can tell us about the structure of the universe itself and how that relates to individual man. That may be fairly broad, but it might be a beginning. I invite Mr. Fuller to say what he wants to say at this start. It has been a very great joy to have met him here and have heard him last night and I think we are talking the same thing. It has been a very great delight. I'm, <coughs> is it, am I live here? Yeah. I'm personally very deeply convinced that uh, I have no faculties with which all human beings are not endowed. I do not think I am uh, any exception whatsoever in this matter. Yes. I have been, however, deeply concerned with exploring for faculties which all human beings do have, which they tend to exhibit from time to time as children, but lose very quickly due to the misunderstanding of the life experienced by their elders who in fear that their children are going to experience pain that they have experienced tend to guide the children in ways that disconnect the switchboard of extraordinary connections with extraordinary faculties with which we do have. Uh, now, because I'm really convinced then that whatever I've been able to do has come by my exploring for those faculties. I also would say that by far the most impressive single information that has emerged from my meeting with Maharishi is the understanding which I have gained particularly from his students regarding meditation. Because in 1927, when I started to explore for the faculties with which we are all endowed and ought to be able to employ them, I'm quite convinced that uh, I know that I was doing so only for one fundamental drive, because I had considered suicide, and I had decided that the warrant of my not committing suicide was that I would turn <coughs> my experiences to the advantage of others. And I'm quite confident that whatever I've been able to uncover of faculties with which we're endowed and my ability to employ them has been come about absolutely clearly by virtue of my wishing to employ those faculties to discover them so I can employ them to the advantage of the many. Now, at, in 1927, when I started to explore for the, the faculties with which we may be endowed, I became very aware of the fact that there was meditation in the, in the East, in India, and the what I learned of it at the time made me feel that the meditators were tending to engage in their study, their discipline, very much for their own advantage. Therefore, it came as a great delight to me in meeting Maharishi to learn that he in his studies, had discovered that in the very earliest recorded thinking in India, the meditator was exploring for these faculties that humans have, but on behalf of his fellow men. And that the, he had felt that the meditators in this 
ensuing times had deteriorated in position of really seeking self-advantage rather than advantage of the many. Right. I think that what has made Maharishi loom into the, our can in the Western world in very short order is this very great change in it and his rediscovery of the earlier truths. I'm not sure, I'm not surprised that the earlier thinkers knew these things. In fact, as I go back to the uh, details and these earliest writings, I'm, I'm, I'm overwhelmed by the, the, the profound, uh, profound uh, simplicity of the total comprehension that manifests by them. So that I f feel that Maharishi and I have come together, both of us exploring for what it is we're endowed with, but both inspired by how we could turn yeah. that the the advantage to the towards the many. I think that and as a news item, we're meeting just in our clothing, we appear very different. We come out of very different kind of patterns. Yeah. Yeah. And incidentally, in 1927, I did feel that in trying to free myself to think effectively, I first spontaneously tended to change my clothing and to break many of the patterns of custom and the customs. And I found, however, that what I was trying to do to turn my thought to the advantage of others began to be impeded by my, at that time, very unique physical appearance <laughs> <laughs> and my determination to only eat various things at certain times. So Tradition I, was I, to I be decided necessary. that I was really putting self before others in doing what I was doing physically. Yeah. And so I decided then to become the most invisible man I knew how to be. <laughs> and the most invisible man to me to be second-rate bank clerk. <laughs> so I've, I've, tri I've tried to appear like a second-rate bank clerk ever since. Very practical. <laughs> but this makes me look quite different from Very Maharishi. <laughs> <laughs> Very practical. Uh, but I think this is the real news. Yeah. That there is coming to the Western world through Maharishi, what is really news due to the fact that there have been people contemplating and, and isolating themselves for thousands of years, not apparently trying to bring the advantage to men except in really quite mysterious ways, yeah. possibly as giving a blessing, but we're looking out for their own personal salvation. I'm sure what makes Maharishi then beloved and understood is then that he has manifest love. You could not meet with Maharishi without recognizing instantly his integrity. You look in his eyes and there it is. <laughs> Often they may be closed. <laughs> <laughs>